I was aware of Until Dawn um, and obviously uh, Rami Malek being um, one of the lead roles in that in that game um, and aware of just how well that was received and um, the incredible reviews that it got. Um, I was also aware that Little Hope was going to be the, the second game in the anthology uh, and that Man of Medan was already sort of uh, under works. So very, very excited to, to join such an established and, and sought after production team and, and very, very flattered that they, they asked me to be involved. The story follows uh, four students, one of whom is actually a mature student, um, and Ellen Davis plays that character, her name's um, Angela. Um, four students and a uh, professor um, called John, and uh, the five of them are stranded in the little town of Little Hope after their bus crashes on a field trip. And they're tasked with trying to find a way out of there while simultaneously trying to make sense of the strange sort of apparitions and um, witchcraft that they're coming into contact with. Um, and they also discover that there are some um, even greater threats uh, that they're going to contend with down the line. You know, really lucky in the sense that um, the, the team around us, uh, you know, us being the cast, were, were really, really experienced. Um, Nick Bowen, the director, uh, was amazing at making sense of things when uh, I couldn't. Um, uh, well, um, who, who uh, sort of almost played a, a co-director role in the production of the game uh, was fantastic help. So lent heavily on them. I think if I had any kind of um, tools that sort of lent themselves well to tackling this task prior to doing it, it pr probably would have come in the shape of uh, Bandersnatch where, you know, I did have to um, entertain sort of multiple narrative strands and, and, and have a kind of audience member um, and an active audience member in mind uh, in terms of accommodating choices into, into my performance. Well, I think, I think the notion that, you know, people really were trialed and, and, and charged with witchcraft, you know, during the 17th century and at such a kind of extortionate rate as well. Um, and the game is as much inspired by the Salem um, witchcraft trials as, as the Andover witchcraft trials and Andover is in the same region kind of neighboring um, uh, Salem and more people were actually trialed for witchcraft in Andover than they were in Salem it's just not not so known um, the game's name Little Hope actually it comes from um, a map uh, of, of, of the region of New England during the 17th century, I think around the time the game is set, partly 19, uh, uh, 1692. And there was a, uh, there was Little Hope Meadow. So that's where the, the uh, game actually gets its name. And it, it kind of just speaks to the fact that the, the whole uh, creation of the game is kind of predicated on a lot of, you know, um, research and uh, historical truths, which kind of makes it all the more scary as well. Obviously, there are sort of different time periods that, uh, you know, exist in the game. And um, part of the, the mystery and I think the kind of fun there is to be had in, in playing Little Hope is trying to work out the connection between the characters and across these different um, time periods. So um, just be paying careful attention to that and, and trying to work out exactly um, how they're linked. I can't wait to play it. It's out um, this fall uh, and it can be played on PS4, um, PC and Xbox. Um, and I'm really, really excited to, to give it a go. Um, I think the notion of playing with myself as a, uh, a computerized character is going to be really kind of strange, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it nonetheless. Do you know what? Um, I haven't been much of a gamer my, my whole life. Um, and yeah, I think I probably, my sort of only real kind of knowledge of horror is probably, probably film and, and, and TV based. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really intrigued to play this game just primarily because of how cinematic and, and filmic it is. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of the gameplay, even though I haven't been able to, to, to physically play it. And it's uh, kind of incredible actually, you know, what, what they've been able to achieve. Like the sound of this video? All of our music was licensed from Soundstripe, a subscription-based royalty-free music library for filmmakers, podcasters, YouTubers, and more. Soundstripe. Keep creating.